previously on Bottom Feeders. We might as well load that van before we go anywhere. How's that tell? Yep. Ron and I have worked together for many, many moons. If it wasn't for him, I can honestly say I wouldn't be able to carry out what's going on. Sometimes I get stuck in here a little, a little more than I would like to be. Isn't really, I'm frustrated with the work. It's nice to be, yeah, out of the market for just a few hours at least in a day. This looks like we got a bunch of sticks out here in this current. Just nothing seems to work right. Even when we think we're in fish, it doesn't seem like we can catch them. Pretty slim. I know I've seen fish here. If you want to be mad about it, you can be mad about it. Doesn't look good. Got a bite. Carp, sheephead, buffalo, and suckers. For most Americans, these bottom feeders have no place in our lakes or on our plates. But there are fishermen who have found opportunity. means open water, and the winter months are thick with ice. But fall is trouble for commercial fishermen. In Pepin, Wisconsin, Mike and Rick Johnson are battling changing conditions. Mike, another net in my truck there if you want to grab it. It's getting colder, it's getting colder every day. Fall's just uh, really hit more hit or miss. You gotta rely more on, your, on electronics, on fish finders to find the fish. That's half the job is finding them. Hit that ditch and found that ditch down. And I don't give a shit. we can go do that right now. We've been looking for fish and you know, the few we've seen just haven't been enough and fall can be rough, but uh, it can be good too. I mean, it's just one of them. You gotta always just weather no matter what it is. That's quick enough too. I mean, boom, you're down in and out of there. We'll put that other, I'll put this other net on then too. Mike and Rick are looking for buffalo hiding in deep trenches. How deep you got? Seven. You know, there's a pretty good ditch in here, but I think a lot of it's filled in. They're getting into that winter mode. A lot of times in the fall, you know, it's always rough. It's always a battle. You're always hunting them. They have some good days, or you have some pretty consistent lousy days. You know, it's just hoping that the good days will make up for the lousy ones you had and, and being able to weather through the, the, the tough times. These fish should push into these deeper holes, but by the time you try to get in there and with a fish finder and see if they're actually there. Then buffalo push right back out. This year has been a little slow. It stinks when it gets this cold and stuff. You just gotta go, really no choice. Pretty dirty. Not every commercial fisherman is rushing off to get on the water this time of year. In Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin, Jeff Ritter is reserving this crisp fall day for his favorite activity, teasing his right-hand man, Ron. Well, I'm gonna go in and get Ron lined up thinking that uh, he's gonna work, and then I'm gonna give him a, a little holiday hunt. <laughs> we'll take off and see if we can shoot some pheasants. I like to hunt pheasants. I grew up hunting them. We haven't had time. I don't even know if he's picked up a shotgun in 10 years. Uh, Ron works at it hard. Everyone deserves a break. What a tangled mess. You ever buy another hose like this and I'm shooting you. He doesn't get excited, which is a difficult thing to do dealing with me, but uh, he doesn't show emotion like, like some of us do. If you do that, you do get boxed and you got time. I wouldn't mind it if you'd run that truck down to the car wash too. I got some of it, but that doesn't bother you, does it? You do know all these have got to go tomorrow, you know. I got you some help. I went real overboard, and, and uh, of course, then again, he doesn't show much emotion. I have no idea what he's thinking. What are you doing? Rinsing everything, or cleaning. No, you can go change your clothes. We're going to go hunting. And hurry up, we don't have much time. Sometimes, a pre-dawn alarm clock is a welcome sound. In Minnesota, Tim Adams is on his way to the woods. Kind of the in-between stage 
not enough ice to get out on and too much ice to take boats, so I'm kind of in limbo as far as work goes. You know what, I'm not fishing. The fall of the year comes around ever since I was a little guy. My dad would take me deer hunting and I just live and die to go deer hunting for at least a week every year. Get your mind off of fishing and being on the water all the time. Here we go. For Tim, a tree stand is kind of like a second home. Going out first day at deer hunting, it's my ultimate goal is to shoot a nice buck. But I enjoy just being out there watching does and small bucks. Pretty quiet here this morning. Haven't seen anything yet. Beautiful morning to be in the woods. I grew up deer hunting. You know, the first few times I went deer hunting, I'd get so cold, I was so little, my dad would put me right in his coat. And ever since, it's just been a, something that I just love to do. I mean, I totally love the deer hunt. I couldn't even imagine if I had to work in an office all day. I mean, at least I'm lucky enough where I'm outside. I don't want to be inside. I couldn't even imagine a life like that. I got a deer way up the hill now. I'm always ready. Like, as soon as I see a deer, it's like, could be the one I want to shoot. Kind of relate it to fishing. You drop a net in, you never know what you're gonna get. So you always got that excitement, you know, at the end of the, the end of the gun barrel. You got a deer coming in, you think you might want to shoot him, and all of a sudden you realize small deer, and you know you just kind of keep watching and dreaming. It's a private matter of time here. It's just a waiting game. There'll be one through here today. How many deer are harvested by Minnesota hunters each year? The answer is C. Every year, Minnesota hunters help maintain the deer population by killing more than 150,000 animals, about 15% of the population. on Lake Pepin. Mike and Rick are struggling with the fluctuating fall fishing conditions. The kids are out hunting, chasing deer today, but we're fishing. I haven't went hunting in shit six, seven years because I'm just, you know, I'm always fishing this time of year. I, I, I enjoy hard work. I mean, it's what I've done my, my whole life. It don't even bug me anymore. Best time of fishing is during deer hunting. With the net in position, Mike and Rick drive fish into their trap. I don't think we're up high enough. That's what I'm wondering, too. I guess I always want to catch fish, but the need might even outweigh that, you know? I, I need uh, to come out ahead by the end of the week. A ball load would be enough, but two boat falls would really make it nice. The Johnson brothers pull in their net. You got one. Soccer. Oh, here's a, oh, another soccer. I like to. They like the winter right in here. Well, when they're getting them deep holes, it's just a, it makes it a little tougher to get your net, especially if you're setting in really deep water, because you, you don't miss most of the fish. Here's something. Ooh, buffaloes. Oh, we got one we can keep. This is one of these weird spots, too. Boom, there they are. Don't feel like it, though. This is usually our, when it's ready to freeze up spot here. They can be, uh, Elusive. It just seems like we've been plagued with some bad luck. It's looking pretty tough. Sometimes you're happy just to get your net back. Down on the prairie, Jeff and Ron are getting ready for the hunt. You got a plug in? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I think it'll be a good time. I've, I've kind of looked forward to it for a while. Point of bird. Is she on point? She's down your way, Ron. Did I get that? <laughs> that was a good shot. Good long shot. See? First bird, first shot. I got one. <laughs> he got lucky. Good shot, but he got lucky. Oh! Holy sh I can't believe that just happened. No, I'm having fun. I just think that um, some guys got out a better area where all the birds are. That sucks. 
It just, I don't know. Let's just keep putting. You going to the bottom run? I can. You I don't can care. Stay in the middle. Okay. Looking good. I'm enjoying watching them fall, but it, I'd like to shoot too. So Ron's doing pretty damn good. I was supposed to be part of it too, but it isn't working out like that. Well, it's supposed to work, isn't it? We get to do a lot of things, you know, just an afternoon or something. We can take off here and there, but you know, it's like, just something different. It's fun. Ron, good, good shot. shot. So I got screwed again. <laughs> right in front of you, Jeff. Come on. I ain't having no luck. I'm speechless. Ron, stay ready. I, just... I knew it was there. Now he's the expert. He picked the right area to be walking, that's all. Yeah, I'm going to switch places with him here in a second. I'm waiting for one big trophy rooster. Back in the woods, Tim is still patiently waiting to fire a round. Got some deer coming through the woods here. Just some small, small deer. Not that I want to shoot. But we're just kind of in limbo here. Kind of hoping for some really cold weather. We can get back out on the legs, but in the meantime, I'm going to hunt deer. You know, I always figure if I'm seeing a lot of deer, pretty soon there's going to be a nice buck coming through, and that usually kind of holds true, not always, but... I got a bunch of deer coming through. Five for sure. He's got to be with them, you know, and you're, you're just all pumped up, excited, and they're coming through. Got all kinds of deer coming now. He's making a scrape. He might be big enough to shoot, I don't know. should come right in to me. Really small. Just a year and a half old deer. I, I want to get something just a little bit bigger. Doesn't have to be a super giant. But... I want to shoot a nice mature deer. I don't want to shoot a smaller immature buck. When I go out there, I'm prepared to sit there all day long until a deer comes by that I want to shoot. Patience is the name of the game here. Definitely seen 